Okay, take a deep breath. Begin to connect into your breathing, into your body. Allowing the breath to move into the east-west position. Good. Big full inhale, big full exhale. Today, I really want you to show up as a listener, as a witness to your body. What is it saying? How do we just allow our body to be heard in a, in a way that would feel satisfying? So maybe that's like, whoa, my hamstrings are really tight this morning. Maybe that's um, my hips need to open or I need to shift or, or change the direction of my twist or how close or far the ground is from my body as we move through this. So continue to show up to your breathing. Be the witness to your body and see if you can listen to what it's asking for and what it's telling you. When I see how fast the kids are growing up, I can see the rapid change or even just looking at pictures from before or bringing them into the present and saying, I'm also having a rapid change. So just show up for your body. What does it mean? Feel your breath, feel your feet on the floor, and then go ahead and start with your shoulder shrugs. Strong arms, strong belly, soft knees, glutes active, sliding your shoulders up to your ears and pressing them down. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. And shoulder rolls up and forward and around. Strong elbows, strong belly. Find that neutral position. Feel your feet on the floor up and back. Opening the thoracic back. And to get right into elbow curls, fold your fingers to your palms, bring your hands to your temples, bring your elbows together so that they touch, and back. All the way together and all the way back. Using your shoulder blades as a hinge, feel the whole shoulder blade move right now. So as you bring the arms out to the side and let your shoulders elevate a little bit, then the shoulders protract and retract as you bring them together and apart. And then hold the shoulder blades more still and do the same action, but make it come from the outside of the arm of the, where the arm bone and shoulder meet. So shoulder blade is more stable and see if you can move from that place. No! <laughs> Arms out to the side, palms down. Squeeze your shoulder blades just a little bit onto your back. Strong elbows, all the way from your feet. Strong feet, strong glutes, and circle forward, 40 circles.
in arm circles, that little bit of sway that your body has is part of the action that helps those deep postural muscles turn on. So that little wiggle is part of what we're after. And then palms up, squeeze and circle backwards. And release. Feel all the way at your feet, bring your arms out to the side, exhale over to one side. Inhale, lift, coming up, exhale over. Bending the spine, reach that lateral flexion. Inhale, come up, strong feet, strong legs. Feel your feet squeeze towards each other so the muscles up the inside of your legs get stronger. One more, hold it over there this time, take a deep full breath. Big inhale, exhale completely, squeeze, pull down a little more. Inhale, come up, full breath on the other side. Inhale, exhale, inhale again, exhale. What is your body saying to you? Can you just listen? Maybe it's saying, whoa, there's a big difference between the right and left side. I need to spend some more time on this side. Maybe it's saying, don't go quite so far or push it a little more. How can you just listen to your body? From there, let's go feet wider, arms out to the side, and then go hand to opposite foot, Taking it over, we're going to start these slowly, bending over, reaching. Inhale, coming up, big breath, and then fold to the other ankle, hand to the ankle, over. Now we're starting to involve the legs and the hamstrings. What do they have to say this morning? Keep going. Over, hip hinge, inhale, coming up. Finding the back side of your body to pull you up. Over and up. Exhale, over. Inhale, lift. <coughs> Exhale, over. Inhale, lift. Keep going. Two more. And then come into a lunge. Come to the top of your mat. Let's go right foot forward, left foot back. Coming into a lunge. Bring the front knee so it's just right over the front heel. And then go ahead and just use this anchor pressing down and send that back heel back toward the floor. You have to turn your foot to let it come down, but just get that whole line of your body all the way down. And just use that to come into that lunge position and open it up. Find your breath, the strength and steadiness in your legs working here. And now we need to pick your upper body up. So this back psoas is working. We're going to lengthen that psoas, holding your body up. Gently tuck your tailbone down toward the floor to bring your pelvis to neutral. And listen to what the front of that back leg says to you this morning. Good morning, psoas. How are you today? How are you on one side? And reach your arms up. Round your upper back just slightly 
and then lift and lengthen up and out of your hips. Breathe in, maybe a little back bend feels appropriate or maybe just this neutral position. And come up, find your anchor again and lift your back foot off the floor, find your balance. Breathe in, hold. Hug the muscles to the bone. Find all the way at your feet, feet, foot muscles squeezing towards each other. Lifting the arch, calf squeezing toward the bone, thighs and hamstrings, adductors and abductors all hugging toward the thigh. And then glutes pulling that thigh bone back in the hip socket. And set that down and switch sides. Taking that lunge position, taking your front hand to your front knee, finding that anchor, sending that back heel down toward the floor. Just breathe into that. And show up as a witness to your own body today. Mine says, whoa, that right calf is more tight than the left. This lunge position using the muscles in your legs should just turn a little bit of heat on in your body, a little bit of heat that can be transformative when we're asking some muscles to work and other muscles that may be too tight to let go. Things that are contracted to expand, especially in that ankle and calf. And then this front leg, foot muscles squeezing toward each other, calf muscles toward each other, leg muscles, top leg, hamstring, and quads, adductor, abductor, all around, so that you can get steady and come up into your balance. Your hand on the leg, we talked about last time, Gives you that cross body, right shoulder, left leg connection. And you can connect all the way from the low back up into your upper back and hold that. How are the wobbles? And come on down. Yeah. Step to the top of your mat. Right foot forward. Left foot back, sending that back heel down at a 45 degree angle. Square your hips, right hip pulling forward, left hip pulling back, and just reach all the way up. Big reach. Maybe a little back bend is appropriate. Connect all the way from the bottom of your feet, squeezing your feet towards each other, hugging toward the midline, squeezing that energy up, and then pulling your upper body up so that that back psoas again is working and find that length. Now, open it up like a warrior two. Bending into that front knee. Big full breath. And then coming front forearm to your front knee and just find length in this top arm. From the heel all the way to your fingers. Pull it up. And once again, with your attention to your breathing, witness how is it to open your hips here? Come all the way up. I'm going to take that into a reverse warrior. Lifting up, letting your spine move to the back. Open that space in the front ribs. Big full breath. Exhale fully. Inhale. And exhale. Step to the top of your mat. Second side. Left foot forward, right foot back. Lunge. Toes turning out just slightly, back heel coming down, 
squaring your hips to the front so that back inner thigh rotates to the ceiling. Square your hips to the front and then pull on that. Check in with the ankle, the calf, the thigh, into the psoas, that connection from the inner thigh up here into the iliacus and all the way up into the low back, into that psoas. What is it saying to you today? And reach. How does it feel when you give it some length? Sending that back heel toward the floor. Full breath in. Exhale fully. And then spin that back foot so that it's parallel and you may need a little wider stance. Front knee directly over that front heel. This front knee has a tendency to want to dive in toward the midline. You need to find your butt muscles on the outer hip to pull it back. And then this opening here right across the pelvis is a big hip opener. Warrior two. Front forearm to your front knee. Find length all the way from the back heel, up through the front knee, through the side body. And if you can turn your chest toward the ceiling a little bit more, go for it. It's not necessary, but it might feel good. Listen to your body. And reverse wire coming up. Taking that hand back, letting this whole front body open, coming back over the back, full breath in. Explore here, how does that feel? Can you root down a little more and lift up out of that strong, stable base? And then coming all the way back up and step to the top of your mat. Coming down onto your hands and knees. Explore cats and dogs. Round and arch. In whatever way feels good to you today, one vertebra at a time, or moving together. Beginning to connect your shoulder blades with your pelvis through that amazing connection that is your spine. What does that connection need today? How would it feel listened to and met? Right foot forward, left foot back, lunge. You may want to pad your back knee, just give it a little protection. And then using that anchor again, again, we are using this cross body connection. And as you take the leg behind you, we have to cultivate a little stability by bringing that back knee and squeezing it toward the front heel, just so that you're not hanging on the muscles of the back hip. But we also want to ask the psoas for a little more length. So find the balance between Muscular stability, hugging to the midline, which should take the back hip a little bit back. And that should make space for the tailbone to root, which should bring you to neutral. And then go ahead and take your arms up. Get as tall as possible. Big full breath. Now let's make a crescent shape away from that back leg. So left foot back, going toward your right side. Open that up a little more. More length, more space, lateral flexion. A lot of stability, legs, knee and heel squeezing towards each other. 
breathe. Inhale, come up, switch sides. Left foot forward, right foot back, pad that knee, and just feel that anchor, front hand to your front knee. Find that square, your hips, back hip coming forward, front hip coming back, hugging to the midline, back knee and front heel squeezing towards each other, and then explore this back psoas again. And be mindful of the ligaments and tendons up in this hip. So squeeze that knee in for a little protection. That should take the pelvis back, put a little more arch into your low back, and then that will make space to root your tailbone. Pull your low belly up and in a little bit. Connect into the muscles of your low belly, your core, and then stretch up. Maybe look up this time. Find your breath, big, full breath in, fully out. How is it when you go into this expansive position, up into space that may be unknown? What shows up in your body? If you're a little out of balance, does that trigger like a, a Squeezing of the muscles, a little bit of a fear response. Can you feel that? Can you breathe into that? And up and over to the side, away from that back leg, lengthening again through that back hip. Open it up. And release out of it. Come back to your hands and knees. And once more around and arch your back. Cats and dogs. And then this little bit of building. So elbows slightly out to the side into that kind of 45 degree angle. I'm going to turn towards you for a moment just because I think it's easier to see. So elbows slightly out. On your hands and knees, you can be out toward a push up position or even on your feet. And then lower down. And I just want you to hover, hold it. And then press up so that you're taking your spinal vertebrae and making them get wider apart. So your shoulder blades will actually get wider apart. But feeling like you're gently tucking your tailbone so you get strong through your low belly. And then all the way up into your upper back, the shoulder blades push apart. That gets more stable. And then push up out of it and take a break. And then again, coming down into it, elbows to the sides, kneeling position. You could be back here and do this or more out or even on your feet. Push down into that push-up position, hover, and then low belly connects into that space. Middle back, upper back, push wide, shoulder blades apart, head in neutral. So looking just slightly ahead of you, hold. You should feel some heat in your body. And press up. One more, building some strength, endurance coming down. Can you feel your muscles and still hear what your body is saying? And press up. Excellent. 
From here, come back to hands and knees. Take your left leg up off the floor into that square. Now, as you lift the leg, the tightness of the psoas or the thigh is going to want to pull and arch into your low back. So tuck your tailbone a little bit, find your low belly, and then lift that up even higher. If you're feeling like you want more today, you could do this in a push-up position, holding it up there, or back down on the knee. You choose. Listen to your body. What's the level you want? Ten pulses. Lift and lower. Low belly engaged, glute and hamstring working. And release it down. Second side. Lift it up. Check in with your shoulders. Find that balance between where the shoulders collapse and where you integrate it well into your side body, all the way from the base. Wrists, thumb and forefinger, sweet, or thumb and pinky pad squeezing toward each other. Muscular energy up the forearm, into the shoulders. Then pulses, lift and lower 10 times. Low belly, tailbone all connected right now. And release it down. And come all the way to standing. If you have a block, grab your block and bring it close to a wall. We're going to do a wall drop or a gravity drop. And line that up. Now that we've turned on the back side of your body, let your heels hang down. We're going to stay with this back side, find the butt muscles, letting your heels hang down so that the ankle is a little bit locked. You're in that dorsiflex position. Hopefully that turns the bones of the shin into the knee, into the femur, into the hips, and then find your glutes. Squeeze and release your butt muscles. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Using the lock at the ankle to direct the rotation up into the pelvis. Then if there's any adjustment that your pelvis needs to make, you can do that. Into your shoulders. Let's go arms full stretch, slight squeeze at the glutes, a little bit at the belly. Lift your arms all the way up. You're just on the floor, that's fine. Or free, in free away from the wall, that's okay. And come down. If you have a wall, butt to the wall, ribs to the wall, head to the wall, everything up. And down. Finding that length we found in the psoas. Finding the activation we found in the glutes. Helping to bring your body back to neutral. A few more. As the arms go up, the shoulders come toward your ears. They wing out to the side a little bit. And then as they come down, shoulder blades move in toward your heart. Arms come down. As you lift, shoulder blades move out and up as the arms come up and down. And 
Go back to your glutes. I'm gonna do a calf raise just to make sure that anything that wants to shift can shift. Coming back down into that, back to your glutes. 10 more butt squeezes. Squeeze and release. And then let's do 10 calf raises up and down. Feel the glutes have a little bit of tension so that you're holding what you just did by moving the femur into a better spot. And then let the ankle slide and glide. And step off of there. You may want to hold the wall or the back of the chair and come into a standing quad stretch. Now, as you do that, if you just watched my back, it went into that big arch. So being able to pull the ribs back, moving back right at the levels of the kidneys, moving that back so the knee can push down for the floor and find length in the front of that thigh. Letting the knee just go down toward the floor and breathe. Hello, thighs. Check in with your body. What are they asking for today? Or maybe what are they just telling you today? Like, whoa, I rode my bike this weekend and I feel ya. Did some work there. Find your breath, fully in, fully out. See if you can get into your breathing and just listen for a moment. We use the standing quad stretch for lots of reasons to open the quad and so as to reposition a hip in the socket. Um, this for people with degenerative hips or SI things usually feels awesome. Almost always feels better. Sometimes for people with knee stuff, this is too much flexion in the knee. So listen to your body. What's it asking for? What's it saying? Good, release it down. And switch sides. Standing quad stretch. Pressing the knee down to the floor. Again, just like when we're in that push-up position, pulling the upper back a little bit round, tucking the tailbone slightly, but only after the thigh bones have moved back so that there's good positioning for the leg bone in the socket, and then move into that space to find your low belly. Where can the breath move into your back and stacking your head right over your shoulders? All of your load joints are being loaded on one side. Sometimes we can do things one-sided to actually bring balance back to both sides because maybe one side wasn't being able to load as well. Maybe because of the position of the femur in the hip socket or the position of the pelvis into the low back or even the connection into that shoulder. 
fully in, fully out. Three more breaths here. And release. Coming down, have a seat. You're gonna stay with your hips a little bit here. One leg in and one leg out. And I'm just gonna grab my block. So this front leg in a square forward and the back leg just in a square behind you. We're gonna just have a twist here. So I want you to turn your body over to the mat or to the floor somewhere. And as you do that, the ribs are gonna have to pull this whole cross connection. It's gonna need to pull around. And this is one of those places where if you listen to your body, it may say this high twist doesn't allow some of the tightness in this hip to release. And it may need to just be closer to the floor. That may change what's going on in your back. And your back may say, whoa, that's too much. So there may be some place in between. Feel how it is for you, but legs one in, one out, and then turning, so my right leg is forward, turning to the right, and just allowing that twist to happen at whatever height it happens, and breathe. Maybe eventually coming down to the floor feels nice. Big, full breaths, fully in, fully out. And then keeping the right elbow down on the floor, if that feels okay to you, more of a mermaid reaching up and over, lifting the ribs to the side, opening that space. Maybe you can even grab onto that wrist and pull, and that gives you some resistance. It closes the chain a little bit so you can push the ribs higher to the sky and open that space a little more. Inhale, come up, switching sides, left leg coming forward, right leg coming back, one in, one out. And then feeling that rotation, turning to the side, finding whatever rotation feels appropriate for you at whatever height your body is telling you to explore. If you gently press your foot down into the floor, up into that inner knee, and then feel all the way up into the inside of the hip bone up here, that's where the iliacus goes. And this is a lengthening of the psoas still, just in a different way. So use that length, we'll be going after that today a bit. Allowing the spine to rotate and having enough space to feel the quiet, the silence, so that you can listen to what your body is saying.
Then coming up to that elbow, taking a little more of that mermaid shape up and over. Again, maybe that hand grasp can happen left. Hand grabbing the right wrist, giving that a little bit of an anchor so that the rib cage can press to the sky and open the space under the armpit, under between the ribs, into the quadratus lumborum right here at your low back, that kidney space, gently tucking the tailbone. The lat is here, the serratus is here, the QL is here, all of those things that can affect the position of your spine, the way your arm moves, and then into the psoas, Again, working how that leg is connected to the rest of your body. And coming up onto your back. Find pelvic tilts, feet on the floor, feel the psoas. So from the inside of the leg all the way up to the low back, feel how that moves as you roll to flat and then to arch. Feel how the sit bones move so they pull away from the floor as you go this way and they push down into the floor as you create more space. Away from the floor to flat back and lift. And then I want you to find neutral where the sit bones are still down. There's a set, slight space in your low back, but you can feel this low belly still turned on. So small space still here. So that just added a whole different set of muscles because your transverse abdominis had to turn on. Some of your flexors are turning on, but in an isometric while your extensors are still hugging in the muscles that pull that arch. So everything all the way around is controlling that neutral position. Then hands behind your head, look back right at the ceiling, keeping the low back in neutral, lift and lower 20 crunches. Lift and lower the low back, shouldn't change, but there should be almost like that girdle feeling all the way around that strong, steady position in the low back. Exhale up, inhale lower. When you get to 20, go back to your pelvic tilts, rock it back and forth again. And then back to that neutral position, put the bottom of your feet together, allow your knees to drop out into a frog. And then here, one more set of crunches. Once again, this femur going out is going to allow the glutes to turn on. It does usually want to arch or flatten the back, but find neutral. So we say this is femur driven lumbar extension. So the legs going out will pull the low back into some extension. But I want you to find that neutral. Everything hugging in. One more set of crunches. Hands behind your head. Look back. Lift and lower. Inhale, down, exhale up. And then bring your legs back in. Rolling over to the side. 
feet and knees together, elbow down below into that side balance. Your choice, either just a clamshell lifting and lowering or a little bit more work by pressing your hips up off the floor, making both sides work to stabilize and down. Lift and lower. 10 times on this side. If you're just doing clamshells, do 20. And switch. Knees and feet together, up on that elbow. Again, just lift and lower that thigh up with everything else being completely stable or lift and lower the bottom hip up off the floor as well. Lift and lower. Finding the glutes, finding those posterior muscles. And release onto your back. Foot circles, point flexes. Find neutral in your pelvis. Gently round your upper back. Both legs up straight on the floor. Do a couple femur rotations here. Just let the thigh bone sit in the correct place in the hip socket. And then root your right leg down to the floor. Pull the left leg up. Shoulders down and back. 20 circles all the way around with the ankle. That right leg is stabilizing in the way that we need the whole low joint, ankle, knee, hip, really rib cage, shoulder to all stabilize on that side while this left leg is relearning foot strike, aligning the bones of the ankle, reverse your direction. And then point and flex. And as you set that leg down, think of that just spinning in the hip socket with nothing else moving, stability through the pelvis and the rib cage as you set the leg down. And then as you pick the other one up, same position between the pelvis and the rib cage. The curve stays the same in your low back as the leg bone spins in the hip socket to bring the left leg to your hands, hold underneath your knee, and start your circles. Left leg on the floor, right leg in that left leg, pressing into the floor so it stays connected all the way from the heel to the knee to the hip. Circling that right ankle. Got some popcorn in that ankle today. Reverse. And point and flex. And release it down. 
both feet on the floor. Lift your hips off the floor once more. Load those ankles, hips coming up, hold it. If you want to grab your hands underneath you and pull your arms back, interlace your hands behind you, you can do that or leave your arms out to the side. Find the calves and hamstrings and glutes as you lift your legs up. And then gently set your body down on the floor again. You may put your legs up over your block or chair or just let them go out straight for your Shavasana. I listened to a little piece of advice on how to support people. And the number one rule was not to tell them what to do or not to give advice. Unless you sort of double ask. And it was like this Jedi trick to allow people to come into their own understanding because normally they know. And I, I have a feeling that's probably the same in your body. So as you show up to listen, we can use that Jedi mind trick to say, hey body, I'm actually gonna take the time and space to listen to what you need or to just be aware of the sensations that you're offering. Just feel how that is in your body as I say that. What happens to the contraction or expansion as you show up for your own body? I'm going to allow for the two minutes of deep listening. So go into the silence. Just see if your body has a message for you today or just simply be aware of the sensations that it's offering. Add that one more level of support of this community to the care and attention of your body and your being and your spirit and the joy that it brings to just have this incredible group to be able to continue to work on this connection between your body and your own aliveness and your optimal health.
I am going to unmute you again. If you want to just continue to go deeper, you're welcome to turn off your sound or turn off the computer. If not, come back together for a moment. <laughs> 